A brand new video a very exciting vlog this one i feel because it's a bit of organizing a bit of house updates a bit of i feel like a lot of my videos now are going to be related to this so if you're here for the home content and you're not already subscribed then stick around because we are nearing completion of our renovation now so today's agenda i'm just going to get ready with you guys um and then i'm gonna just have a bit of a house day just got the doors open barney's currently in the garden so he's just coming and going as he pleases and i'm gonna clean out the kitchen cupboards like the new kitchen as in like clean them and then i'm going to um kind of switch over what was our temporary kitchen down in the utility so like we've got air fry down there toaster kettle all of that kind of stuff we've got a little fridge down there some food in the cupboards all of that sort of stuff I want to kind of bring it back to it being a utility room rather than a temporary kitchen and start moving everything that we need to up into the new kitchen because it's now in full working order the painters and decorators are out of that space they've still got the rest of downstairs to do the downstairs loo the front two rooms a bit of the corridor as well but that space is done it's done it's ready for me to sprinkle my styling magic and my organizational desires all over it i honestly oh this is the day that i've been waiting for well i mean having it fully complete would be ideal but to have like a space where i can start organizing it now is just like amazing so the tv's in sound but i'll show you everything down there um later you might have seen in my latest video anyway my last vlog that i did some house updates but yeah so that's the plan for today now i did um mention to you guys when i reached 100k subscribers here on youtube thank you so much guys that i would do a little bit of a q a rather than do a full dedicated q a i thought i'd just do some quick fire questions whilst getting ready and showing you what i've been wearing on my face lately this is very much going to just be like an everyday basis minimal makeup look because i'm not really doing anything other than errands sorting out the house so i'm not going to go full glam not that i ever go full glam but yeah i've got up some questions and let's quick fire through them for any new viewers if you want to get to know me a little bit more then hopefully this will help how old are you 31 my birthday is january the 4th 1992 so that makes me 31 i'm just going to use the charlotte tilbury flawless filter in 2.5 and a big fluffy brush do you think another renovation is in your future i think we would potentially maybe look to build the next one so that we can live here whilst doing it so that living in a renovation is never going to be a thing anymore both tom and i have said done it once enjoyed it it's been a journey never again i think we're going to be here for a while and yeah next one build whilst living here at the same time hopefully i mean that's the plan anyway will you be up for more clean with me and food shop cook with me videos when the house is done yes of course all great suggestions what's your middle name i feel like new viewers won't know this but freya is actually my middle name but most people call me freya family call me lauren which is like my name is lauren freya but friends tom even some family friends as well will still call me freya so um yeah it's just kind of stuck like throughout school and everything everyone called me lauren but um any kind of like new friends or for like the last 10 years quite a lot of people call me freya so it's just kind of stuck and obviously you guys all know me as freya as well plus i, I like the name freya I prefer the name freya where do you store all the stuff you're buying do you actually use them so clothes and stuff like that for haul videos i will i won't keep everything so i do return um bits after i've tried them on to show you guys um and then home stuff i've got a storage room in our basement which i've been kind of um keeping to one side by the way i'm using the lasting perfection concealer by collection so we've got a storage room down in there which we will have shelves and it will be organized but for now it's just housing everything ready to start styling the ground floor do you pay for everything you buy and how much do you send back so that's kind of 
related to that yes i pay for everything other than gifted items which i would disclose like pr packages and stuff like that but also i do kind of see this as my job so like i kind of shop for a living show you guys what's new in shops so quite often things that i maybe don't need that i've got i'll then donate we've got a charity bank not too far from us that i just send loads of stuff to so yeah i do donate quite a, quite a bit as well what advice would you give your younger self uh find strength in vulnerability being vulnerable is not weak favorite ever sponsor pr brand to work with uh oh good question i don't really have a standout one when i work with big brands like primark like huge companies that has been like a pinch me moment i quite enjoy working with cheshire oaks when i've worked with them a few times because i love a bargain and it's a designer outlet so it's always quite fun to work with them what career would you have if you didn't get into youtube i was speaking to my friend lydia about this and we're quite interested in like psychology and how the mind works especially going through therapy and learning a lot more about that i just find it really fascinating i think i would have loved to have studied psychology so maybe something to do with that like i love true crime stuff as well and like how the mind of a serial killer works i don't know i just find it fascinating so if it's nothing to do with this industry maybe that also another thing that i quite like is like interiors property that kind of thing so uh yeah since doing a renovation um got a bit of experience with doing the property but it's the interior styling part that i think i find most exciting like now that's why my juices are flowing my creative juices are getting excited for styling the downstairs renovation okay i'm gonna go in with um not that shade because that one's a bit too dark for me precisely my brown pencil in shade 2.5 from benefit do you think you will always create content for youtube even if you are in your 50s i hope so i mean that would be the ideal I love it. I feel like I started this very much as a hobby and um, didn't obviously earn a penny for a long, long while. So it wasn't even started up as a career. And there are definitely channels out there. My mum's even thinking about setting one up uh, targeted at over 50s. So yeah, why not? What do you do for work apart from YouTube? YouTube is my full-time job. Are you and Tom going to have a well-deserved holiday when you finish the festival? We've actually been looking at going away somewhere, hopefully within the next month or so. We're thinking about just doing like a bit of a last minute holiday. What I would ideally like to do is do like shorter trips around Europe so they're not too long distance and do a few of them. I feel like that's something that i would prefer to do rather than go away for like a long two week three week holiday um especially with having the house done now i'm kind of excited to be in the house and enjoying it <coughs> tom and i have been sneezing a lot i feel like hay fever is definitely in the air what direction do you see your channel going content wise in the future i think very much like home content just as i am like shopping maybe lifestyle if we ended up having kids or whatever in the future where are you originally from so i have talked about growing up in a military household before so we very much up to moved a lot throughout my childhood so i don't really have a place that i grew up so when people ask me where i'm from i can't really answer that if i'm being completely honest with you the longest time i've ever lived somewhere is like i would say manchester manchester and surrounding areas so people ask me i just say manchester but i didn't grow up here grew up all over the show mostly in the south of england i went to boarding school for a while near sort of cambridge way Bury st edmunds in suffolk i'm old i started boarding school when i was 10 age 10 so i went through till i was 18 so for eight years i did that and then whilst i was at that school obviously my parents were moving every couple of years you move house bit of an unconventional upbringing i'm gonna go in with a bit of cream bronzer the chanel healthy glow bronzing cream they've got two shades i get the darker one when you first started how often did you upload to youtube i pretty much have stayed with the same upload structure of twice a week wednesdays and sundays since the beginning i toyed with uploading three times a week a few times but i actually found it kind of it didn't help with the sort of channel algorithms and my growth so i ended up sticking with two days a week wednesdays and sundays pretty much sometimes when i get a bit busier over like christmas i might do three uploads but generally speaking Wednesdays and Sundays are my upload days. Please can you tell us your tan and makeup products? Makeup products I'm sharing with you now. Tan, I've started using a new one called FN Tan and it's really good, really enjoying that. For my face, I put in the Tan Lux Face Tanning Drops in with my moisturizer. Although I've not really got any tan on at the moment. Would you get a second dog? 
of course I get second third fourth fifth if I could um I am actually really enjoying just having Barney at the minute he's such a good boy like he's so easy to have I found puppy days quite hard and now that I've got the benefit of just having an easy dog I feel like I want to enjoy this for a little bit longer at least I'm thinking maybe when he's I mean, when I first got him, I said maybe when he's two, I'll get a second dog. He's already two and a half now, and I'm not even thinking about it. So I'm saying maybe when he's like five or six, but who knows, when I get there, I might still be very much in the mindset of, I like having one. I like the idea of having two, but then I just think everything's doubled. His doggy daycare costs, his insurance, his food, the ease and convenience of being able to just go out with him. Instead, I'm having to walk two big dogs, because if I was to get a second, I'd get another golden probably. So. For now, I'm enjoying just the one. But honestly, if I could have a house full of dogs, I would. Ooh, this is a bit of a juicy question. How much have the renovations cost to date? Did you set a rigid budget? So no, we didn't set a rigid budget. We have in mind of what this house might be worth once finished. Uh, we don't really want to exceed that with the cost of the house and the renovations added together. So we are trying to keep within somewhat of a budget but not strictly speaking in terms of this isn't a house that we've flipped this is a house we've done to live in so we've you know we've gone we've splurged a little with certain things like we could have just gone white plug sockets we haven't we've gone for the Corston ones um so yeah there are elements whereby we've spent more than we needed to but because we're spending it for us for ourselves to live in it we've kind of found that middle ground um we could have easily spent more and we could spend more for instance the basement renovation we had the option to um rather than just renovate the basement as it is we could have had the entire footprint of the extension dug through as extra basement storage but we decided it just wasn't a cost that was validated because of the ceiling price of this house once it's finished it's never really going to get more than a certain amount if this is all making sense so if i'm honest i actually don't know how much we spent we've not been strictly keeping to a budget we've got a rough idea of how much we spent but we, we're keeping to a budget somewhat so that we don't go over the cost of the total price when it's finished that makes sense but we're probably at a couple of hundred i don't know if i'm allowed to say that i'm gonna ask tom but i think he'll be okay if i say that where would where would yours and tom's ideal wedding destination be or venue he's not really that bothered about marriage i'm like take it or leave it i'd like to get married but i'm not it's not a deal breaker for me this is by the way the uh what's it called the giorgio armani neo nude melting color balm cheeks and eyes in the shade 50 yeah tom's not that far obviously if he asked me to marry him i would of course say yes and if that were to happen then in terms of a wedding destination i think he would ideally like abroad i would like an english countryside manor and a september wedding so we probably differ on our, our ideal wedding destination we do meet up in manchester never really thought about that is that something that people would come to for like met up for a coffee or something i'd be so nervous you'd have to like hold my hand <laughs> but um i don't know is that something that you would want to do let me know do you get decision fatigue when decorating i've never heard that term before but i can't relate to it more i find it so intense making so many decisions for hours yeah for me it's a case of like the amount of choice so like when it comes to choosing a sofa i'm just like where to even begin finding a sofa or like the kitchen was quite a hard decision because it's such a big decision that it's kind of like once you've got it you've got it i'm using the laura messier powder by the way and translucent is it translucent yeah how do you and tom split finances especially when buying for the house we're just 50 50 with everything keep it straight down the middle we're quite lucky that we can do that but um yeah we do have a joint account for things like food bills and we just put the same amount into it each month just to keep it simple would you move again yeah definitely not opposed to moving again but i want to enjoy this house for a while would you get another dog already answered that do you work out and do you still do yoga so yoga for me i fall in and out of i feel like for me mentally i love it but same with meditation but i would like to do it more than i do let's just say that in terms of working out though i walk the dog for like 
probably like two hours a day and when it's hair wash day i'll probably break into a jog i probably do like a anywhere between five and ten k runs each time but at my pace i'm not really setting paces i'm just i don't stop and walk i just keep jogging the whole time but i just kind of keep jogging until i feel like I'm done. When will the garden reno be starting? Can't wait to see the finished kitchen. So the garden is planning, in planning stages now. We are after planning permission for kind of an outdoor housed area for like an outdoor garden kitchen. Whether or not we have it enclosed, we're not sure yet. And um, we've had some drawings done, but they're very much first draft at this stage. So currently Tom is in the process of clearing it out, like hacking back all the weeds and everything just to keep it nice and open. But we've got rough ideas of how we want the garden to be. So it's kind of starting from now. What do you use on your hair? So just generically speaking, love a dry shampoo, love a Moroccan oil, shampoo and conditioner, and I always use purple shampoo and I wash my hair twice a week. And then in terms of tools, hair dryer, I quite like the GHD Helios. I've got the Zuvi one as well. I've got the um, GHD Curve, Soft Curve Curlers. I've got some other ones that they're sending me actually, which I'm excited to give them a try. Best renovation advice. I'd say take, take your time decision making. Don't rush. Because there are a couple of things that I would have like maybe done different. Um, and also just preparation is the key because at the start of the renovations you've already got to be thinking about plug sockets where they go so there's been a couple that we've had to add in because we thought we won't need one there and then since doing it we're like we do need one there so just preparation is key what does tom do for a job he um he has like a couple of different things so he's got some property he's got um a couple of businesses the main one being sort of like social media marketing do you ever get any negativity on social media i feel like i don't i feel like you get the odd comment but it's one that i can like sort of brush past i'm gonna use the iconic london illuminator how did you and tom meet we met on a night out in manchester what jobs did you have before youtube i worked at manchester united in hospitality i had a marketing job have you spent more money on the house than you bought it for no when did you start youtube did you earn enough to call when do you earn enough to call it your job uh, i don't actually know i feel like i remember my first pay packet from google adsense which is how like we get paid every month from google from the ads that you see on youtube videos i remember my first pay packet was 60 pounds for the month and i'm pretty sure that was after I got to, was it 1,000 or 10,000 subscribers? I think it must have been a 1,000. I can't remember. But um, it's more based on views. So it's relative to that rather than your subscriber count. I don't know. I honestly don't know how long it took. Maybe like four or five months. How did you start your journey on YouTube? Long story short, I studied languages at university someone else asked about my degrees actually so i studied french modern language studies french and a bit of mandarin as well at university of salford when you study a language you have to spend a third year abroad and then come back and do a final fourth year so i studied no i didn't study i worked in france for a year and it was over that period that as a part of our coursework we had to do a blog so i kind of discovered this world of blogging um but then alongside that i also set up a youtube channel to like link and tag the blog that's no longer pri um live i don't even think i privatized i think they're all just deleted them now but um that was like our coursework for our year abroad and it was through that that i discovered the world of youtube and this was obviously this was back in 2013 2013 so since then I've loved YouTube. Started my YouTube six years ago now, six or seven years ago. Where's the best place you've traveled to? Where would you recommend? I quite liked Marrakesh as an experience, staying in a Riyadh in the center of Marrakesh. Crete was beautiful when we went there. We'd looking to maybe go back to somewhere, one of the Greece islands next, potentially, or maybe Portugal. I've never been to Portugal. Barbados is lovely. America, I, I lived in America, but I would love to go back to America with Tom at some point. Hope you're doing well. You seem more happier in yourself lately. How's your anxiety at the moment? I've got a few questions on that. I feel like having therapy has been the best thing ever. If ever you're considering it, do it. It's just nice to talk to a neutral party, have a different perspective on things. And yeah, I'm doing good. It's definitely like a long journey, I would suggest. I would say, suggest, I would say. It's a work in progress. 
but I'm learning to manage my anxieties and um, yeah, I would say I'm definitely happier, definitely less anxious, but it's still very much a journey, which I'm more than happy to talk about if you guys are interested in hearing more about that and more about my therapy, what I've learned, what I've taken from it. So yeah, let me know if that's something you want me to chat about. I think that's pretty much it. There's a lot of like repeated questions here. So my battery died, ran out, um, but pretty much answered all the questions there and there was just a few repeats anyway. But yeah, also just other products that I use. I just finished off with Hula Bronzer in my eyes as well, like in my eyes, <laughs> on my eyelids, just in the creases and a pop of lip liner the number seven stay perfect lip pencil nude with some carmex lip balm and my armani eccentrico mascara soft focus setting spray the veil one from hourglass just to set that and good to go so yeah let's get on with some housey bits now shall we which is probably what you're all here for anyway tom has just made us some um, coffees with our new coffee machine we're enjoying it, but you're still getting used to it, aren't you? You've got to change. Got to what? You've got to change the grind every time you get new bins. We're going to go to, in Wilson, there's like an antiques fair today. So we thought we'd just pop in, see if it's any good, see what it's like. If it is good, then maybe just keep eyes peeled for anything that's maybe good for the house. But we'll see. We'll see if it's any good. Um, I thought I'd show you a few clips of what it is like and then operation start cleaning the kitchen cupboards i think i'm gonna start doing or maybe bring the utility bits up first i can't decide honestly there's that much to do and we might be going to live them for the next day or two as well so it's just a bit chaotic but we'll get there vintage affair it's like antiques affairs at the village center i did actually come out with a purchase so i'll show you what i got and um, it was something that i've seen seen these on zara home they're like butter paddles like traditionally to make butter with but these ones are like just rustic kind of wooden they obviously need a bit of a brush a bit of a clean but even if i don't use them as butter they call them butter paddles i don't know but anyway even if i use them for styling purposes maybe like on that shelf somewhere or something and like we'll put 
put some parts in books and maybe like a vintage frame of something up there. So yeah, I'm on the hunt for like um, vintage kind of finds to style up that shelf because I want it really rustic. I've got a couple of inspo images on Pinterest that I found and I feel like the sort of places that I could go to style up a space like that are antique fairs, charity shops, that kind of thing. So yeah, I might do like a bit of charity shopping as well within my next upcoming vlogs for styling that shelf. But yeah, I got those, they were six pound. Seen them on Zara Home for 29.99 and nearly got them. Glad I didn't now, because 6 99 is a bargain. And those ones are actually rustic and have that old aged look to them. So yeah, that is everything that I got though. We did pop into Gales and we had a lovely picnic on the park at Wilmslow Cars. There was some kind of event going on though, so it was quite busy, but we just had a lovely long picnic in the sun and feeling very full now. Tom is on Project Garden, just doing a bit more clearing up. Barney's just in and out between the two of us. And yeah, I've just been sorting out like kitchen bits and still got loads to do. Like it's actually making me realize how much I've got to do and how long it's gonna take me. Cause I'm being quite meticulous with clearing out that utility room and like binning out date stuff. But I just wanted to jump on and show you my little antiques patch, six pound. There are a couple of other things that I really like the look of, some chunky gold frames, but they were 18 pounds each. I think it was because of the thing that comes inside the frame as well. And I feel like I would be putting something else within the frame, so I just need the cost of the frames, really. So I'll keep my eyes peeled for some more of those. From the same seller, she had like these, it was like an old watchmaker's cabinetry type thing that was only about that wide, but quite tall, in black with like brass pull handles that I thought would be good for keeping in the storage room with like nuts and screws and stuff like that, but it was too pretty and too expensive at 120 quid to do that. Definitely needs to be more of a display thing, but I just couldn't think where on earth I could put it. So sadly, I left that one. It was beautiful though, but yeah. I feel like over summer, we've got some upcoming trips to charity shops, antique fairs, vintage shopping, that kind of thing, which is very exciting. because it's like treasure hunts. That's what it reminds me, it's like one big treasure hunt. That's my little update. Something else I've been doing whilst having on in the background, um, I thought I'd mention a Netflix show called Muted, a new one. And also there's something else we're gonna watch tonight, which looks quite good. It's part of, um, let's see what it's called. Oh, I want to watch Costco, is it really worth it? See as I'm a Costco shopper. The Real Bling Ring Hollywood Heist. All about a couple, I think it's two people, that thieved, they robbed. Oh, it's like a Channel 4 thing that they've uploaded to Netflix. But it's called The Real Bling Ring Hollywood Heist, and it's about um, these people that basically just went and robbed celebrities in Hollywood, like literally just tried their luck, opened the front door, and started robbing celebs. But I thought that'd be quite interesting, so we're gonna watch that tonight in our brand new space, which we've bought the bean bags up for, and we have been loving this setup here. Barney's been using his bed as well over there because we had that bed in our bedroom for a while and he wasn't going in it and I love the look of it and I thought he's not gonna use this bed but I think it's because it was in our bedroom and that's why he wasn't using it because he was choosing the bed. And I'm sure when we get a sofa, he might choose the sofa. Time to get our clean on. I'm gonna start by using this Finish dishwasher cleaner just because we had it tested a while back when we first installed it. So had a bit of stagnant water in so I thought I would give it a fresh sparkling clean and whilst that was on and doing its thing I started by taking off all the kind of packaging labels to the fridges and the ovens as well like any kind of stickers to remove them obviously all of these things are already very clean so it's just a case of removing the stickers quick wipe down and they are good to go give me some time give me some time to get stronger I'll be okay just give me a little bit longer Yeah, we're gonna win The struggle we're in It's never goodbye It's never goodbye till it's over now that the dishwasher is all washed, I am, um, well, cleaned, I should say, 
I then started loading it with um, any kind of pots that needed a wash. As I've been going through things, bringing it up from the basement, I've noticed there's a few things that just need a bit of a refresh, a bit of a clean. So yeah, I've just had the dishwasher run a few times as well as hand washing some bits. So yeah, as I was saying, just bringing stuff up from the basement. I've started by any kind of like drinks, bringing them up to what will be our drinks fridge, essentially this one. So any kind of waters, soft drinks, a couple of alcoholic drinks, even though we're not big drinkers in this household, it is nice to have the option to always have a chilled bottle of wine or champagne or Prosecco if you do have guests over. I want us to win the struggle we're in. It's never goodbye. It's never goodbye to live. Also brought up the appliances like the air fryer, the toaster, which were in the uh, basement in our temporary kitchen setup here in the utility room. So where that space was taken up with all of those appliances, I was able to just clean the surfaces, wipe them down, and I'll start styling that space again pretty soon. But for now, again, bringing more stuff up from the basement, from the storage room that I had kept to one side ready for our new kitchen just kind of kept things within their carrier bags just to keep them dust free and i'm still doing that whilst popping them within the cupboards until i have given the cupboards an actual clean uh, but yeah first kind of part to my whole process is simply by bringing everything up that actually needs to be in the kitchen upstairs for a bit of a change of scenery not to relax unfortunately still got plenty to do but I've actually got this big pile of laundry to put away so I decided I'm just gonna have a break from the kitchen for a sec and I need to put all this away it's been stressing me out the fact that I've got such a pile of laundry I mean lots of that are like spare towels and bedding that I keep here anyway with the kitchen I'm very much at the stage of I'm still bringing things up from downstairs into the kitchen and just kind of putting them in cupboards, still yet to clean out the cupboards and actually organize them. I feel like honestly, at the pace that I'm going, it's gonna take like a while. It's not just gonna be like do it in a day type thing. So um, yeah, expect several vlogs like this incoming. Once I've got everything upstairs, we'll maybe like start, well I've started filling the dishwashers now to start washing pots and then slowly but surely start putting things away um, bit by bit, like cupboard by cupboard probably. There's a lot to do, there's so much to do. This is the bit that I've been waiting for and that I'm so excited for, but I'm realizing how much there is to do. I expected to do it all in one video for you guys, it's just not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. But anyway, I hope you guys don't mind these kind of videos because yeah, there'll be several of them. Right, let's get to laundry pile now. I have had a few questions in the past where my laundry baskets are from as when you guys have spotted them within my vlogs so the laundry baskets that have my dirty laundry in the lights and darks that kind of clip together they are from Zara Home and the I actually think they're sold out now though but then the uh, wicker basket that I've got here which has like a linen liner in which I love it's just the most practical thing to carry laundry to and from the utility room that is from Matalan good old Matthew Allen I think it's about 12 pounds 12 15 pounds and uh, yeah my stacker system as well people ask me how I do that so it's got like a um, a drawer within the washer and dryer to allow them to stack the kind of strap together it was about 50 pounds from Argos to be able to have our washer and dryer stacked and honestly guys it's the most useful thing having that drawer in the middle to be able to fold laundry um, as well but yeah thought I would just mention that because I do quite often have a few questions on those few bits I was looking for these. I 
knew I had some dishwasher tablets somewhere. Right, I can start using the uh, dishwasher now. I've just filled it and I thought, where on earth are those dishwasher tablets that I bought? So I've got them. What else is in here? Oh, a couple of other bits for the kitchen. Some cleaning bits. Yeah, I'll take that downstairs. Not that anyone's asked, but if you were interested in knowing the method to my madness with my laundry pile, my ever-growing laundry pile, I feel like laundry is just one of those tasks that never feels done. I start by putting the laundry into piles of which room the items go in because I do have my clothes spread across a few different rooms. So this one has like all, it's like my kind of filming room, so I've got all my kind of sweatshirts in here hoodies t-shirts that kind of thing all my basics and the way that i organize them you'll see in a moment in my wardrobe is i categorize the items so it might be like crop tops vests t-shirts sweatshirts and then within those categories i then color coordinate them from light to dark it just really helps me see everything that i've got i used to have just everything light to dark but it kind of makes it hard to find what you need to find and you forget items that you've got so i find by having the categories really helps as well. So I'll do the categories and then color coordinate. I now just have a bedding and towels on here, which I need to really find a home for. At the minute, I'm just putting them in storage bags under the bed, but ideally I'd like some somewhere a bit more convenient, a bit better for them. But it's time for some fresh PJs. And I think I'm gonna go with some white company ones. I know Tom has got his white company ones on tonight. So we're gonna be matching. And it's time to sit and chill in front of the TV. And actually for the first time, light a candle on the island, I feel. We could be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely. We could be gazing at the stars, but now it feels just like I wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me. I never gave the key to you, even though I wanted to. I should be trying something new, but now my body's sick. I'm tired of dwelling in the dark, it's just that my heart can't take it. I didn't know what it would cost me when I let you go. I feel alone, and I'm just singing, mm -hmm. it should have been you. Another time, another place, I just know. Mm -hmm. It could have been you. What a crime and what a shame to let go. Sometimes I just don't know what to do. It should have been you. My mother comes in my bedroom with the phone in her hand crying. So she gives me the phone. Talk to Xanax, thinking, you know, we're gonna have to be up for makeup at seven. And that didn't end up happening. Outside with your hands up. There was a SWAT team at my house. 